Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at forms in AngularJS and form validation in AngularJS. Uh, so over here on the left, I've got a basic HTML page lined up. Uh, I've got Angular included. I've got it wired up or bootstrapped with ng app. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop a form on the page. So just a basic form. I'm going to load that up in the browser here. And what you're going to notice is right off the bat, it already has this weird class of ng pristine and ng valid. And uh, the reason is that when you put a form on the page, uh, Angular is actually overwriting it with a form directive. So it's it's overwritten the form uh, with its own form directive, and it's going to do that with any uh, nested inputs as well. Uh, and you see here again, it's ng pristine and ng valid. Uh, the form itself and any inputs have four basic states and the first one is pristine which is uh, you know it's a fresh form nobody's changed anything the user hasn't entered anything uh, the next one is dirty or ng dirty uh, and that means that you know the user changed something uh, ng valid means that the form itself is valid or the input is valid and then ng invalid is going to be you know it's invalid uh, so let's uh, let's mess with this a little bit. So one thing about the form directive is you always want to give everything a name. It's a way that you can reference everything else. So we're just going to call this FRM. I'm going to drop an input here, and I'm going to make it an email type. I'm going to give a name of email, and I'll give it a ng model of uh, we'll say user dot email. And as soon as I drop that on the page. Uh, what you can see here is uh, the, the input itself also gets these values. So ng pristine, ng valid, and ng valid email. Uh, now, as soon as I type something here, what you're going to see is it's ng dirty. Also on the form itself, it's ng dirty. Uh, and you're going to see ng invalid, and that's because it's an invalid email. So this is using uh, a directive. Uh, from Angular that knows that we are anticipating an email and it knows that there's no email in there uh, So as soon as I type an actual, you know something that might be an email You can see now we have ng valid email uh, So what we're gonna do really quick is let's drop a little style on this so we can take advantage of those styles So let's start with ng invalid uh, And we'll just say What are we gonna do? So let's say a border of uh, one pixel solid red. Now, as soon as I load this up, whoops, that's not right. ng invalid. Uh, uh, you know, everything's valid at that point. So let me give it some form of validation. The first one I'm going to use is required to say like, hey, you know, this one is required. And as soon as I load that up, you can see we've got these two red borders. And that's because uh, both the form and the input. So the form overall has the ng valid. Uh, you'll see now it also has this ng valid invalid required and uh, same thing on the uh, the input itself it's got invalid invalid required and invalid email so as soon as I uh, start to type in here the the ng valid required comes into place on both of them uh, but since it still needs an email now everything goes away everything is uh, ng valid required the whole thing is valid itself and we've got the valid email uh, so, and that's one good instance where you really want to use this on the, the input itself. Uh, so now we don't have it all, you know, over the form, but it still needs to be an email. So there you go. Uh, okay, so what we could do here, let's drop a message on the page. So let's throw this into a div. And this is purely for layout. It's certainly not required. Span. Oops. Let's move that on to the next line. And here we're going to say, you know, hey, it's required. And what we can do is we can use ng show on that. And the first thing we can do is just say if it's invalid. And this is where the names come into play. So we say, you know, here's our form. And then the name of the field is email. And we can tap into the invalid method. Uh, and so it says it's required. And it's going to keep on doing that until I put uh, an actual email address on that. Because that that's when it becomes valid rather than invalid uh, so as a whole it's invalid but one way we can kind of work around that because maybe i want to say hey it's required and then i want to say hey you know i can see you're doing something but uh but i need an email 
so rather than just using invalid, we can use error, and then we can tap into a specific error. So this one is required, and now as soon as I start to type, the uh, the required message goes away. Now the field itself still has the ng invalid there, uh, but let's go ahead and add another message below that, and we'll say not an email. Oh, email. And so here we can tap into the email error. Uh, so load that. And now it's saying it's not an email. So as soon as it's gone, we're back to required. As soon as I type something, it's saying, okay, you know, you, you pass the required uh, validation, but we need an email. Now you're good to go. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's uh, do one more input before we move on to the form itself. Uh, so on this one, let's do... We're gonna make this one a password. So type of password, we'll make the name password, and we'll make the model user.password. Of course it's required. And down here, let's tap into that. So it's required. And uh, the password, well, now the email one doesn't make any sense. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this one out a little bit so we can see it on the screen a little better. Uh, just each of these attributes on its own line. And I'm going to add a couple others. So the first one I'm going to use is ng min length. So that's a, we're, we're asking for a minimum length. So I'm going to say the minimum length is five. And then I'm going to add on a max length. So you can't go over 10. And then uh, just like we did, and let me kind of stretch this out a little bit so we can see everything here. Just like we did uh, for the required, we can say the error is uh, min length and there we'll say it's too short. And then if we say max length, max length, now we're gonna say it's too long. Okay, so let's load that up really quick. So uh, this is required, it needs to be an email. Down here, one, two, three, four, five, it's perfect. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10 is good. And once I hit 11, it's too long. Okay, so both of those are working just as we expected. However, when we load up the page, uh, we're getting you know these red boxes and it's yelling at me. I didn't even do anything wrong. Uh, so let's uh, first. I'm going to drop a label on each of these just so it you know looks a little better. So this one's for email, and this one's for password. Let's just load that up really quick. Okay, so it needs an email. It needs a password. It's yelling at me all the time. Uh, and this is where we can tap into the uh, dirty state. So what we could do is we could say, let me just copy this really quick. So form.email.dirty and then a double and. So we want both of these to be the issue. So that, that would mean that the user has to enter something before the web page starts yelling at them. Uh, so let's drop this there, this there, and this there. Uh, so now you can see, in, you know, let me stretch out a little bit more. Uh, so you can see that we're checking for, oh, this one should be password actually. Let's tweak that really quick. Password, password, and password. Okay, so now what we can do is we can load this up and you know what, it is invalid. So, you know, I, I, I do need to address that. So what I'm gonna say is that the input needs to be uh, invalid and dirty. That way, when we load it up, uh, so we've got a fresh page here, uh, nothing's happened and it's not yelling at me. Now, as soon as I type it in, it is saying, you know, hey, it's not an email, but whatever. Uh, now, when I get to the password, one, two, three, four, five, we're good. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, too long. So that, that that's a much better experience uh, rather than just loading up and being, you know, hey, you haven't filled all this stuff in. So now we can look at the form itself. So let's uh, just throw on a button here. Uh, call it send, or no, let's call it, or say we're gonna log in, log on, whatever. Uh, and now what we'll do is we'll disable that if the entire form is invalid. So we can just say ng disabled equals, and then all we gotta say is form, whoops, form dot invalid. So now we can use this kind of overall everything's invalid or something in there is invalid so the entire form is invalidated now when we load this up you can see this button is totally disabled uh, it's still disabled well 
So now we've got a good email, but it's still disabled because we need the password. And now it's enabled. I can click on that. But if I go too far, now it's too long and it's disabled again. Uh, so there's a couple more things that might follow up on. One of them is going to be in ng submit. Submit equals, and you can you can call a function, you know, from your controller or your code. Uh, but I think that I think that's pretty good for now. Uh, so that that that's a quick look at uh, how awesome the form directive is, and all the inputs that you can tap in there. You can just get uh, right in there and start working all this validation stuff without having to code up, you know, a whole bunch of things or bring in an extra library. It's all just built right into Angular. Uh, so there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good one.